Hello, welcome back to Pierce Rocks. Today, I want to show you AirFrog, the tiny wireless coprocessor for ARM. I'm going to use AirFrog to update the firmware on this live running ARM MCU. I'm going to use AirFrog to add Wi Fi coprocessing to this ARM MCU. And I'm also going to give you a quick tour of AirFrog's other capabilities. First of all, I'll explain what you're looking at. Down here, we've got the inside of a Commodore 64, and I've replaced the ROMs from this Commodore 64 with ARM microcontroller based ROMs that I wrote myself. These are a fully software based solution. On the screen here, you're seeing the output from the Commodore 64, and you can see it's currently running. I'm going to take my AirFrog, I'm going to plug it in to the character ROM of this Commodore 64. I'll give it five seconds to boot, and then I'll visit the AirFrog web server. And in that five seconds, it's booted, it's fully analyzed the firmware that's on the software ROM on the ARM MCU, and it's connected to Wi Fi and it's got an IP address and it started a web server. And the way these software ROMs work is they're sitting in an incredibly tight loop, spending every single cycle they possibly can waiting for an indication from the processor that they need to serve bytes and then if they need to serve bytes serving those bytes and the way they're doing that is serving from a rom table that's been preloaded into ram i can use airfrog to change that rom table in ram go to memory access go to memory writer i indicate under bulk memory write the address i want to upload a new image to i choose the image i want to upload which is a different character set and keep your eye on the screen and I'll upload that to the ARM MCU now and you can see basically instantly the character set on the Commodore 64 has changed. That's changed not because the software ROM running on the ARM MCU has done anything it has no idea what is going on. AirFrog has changed the RAM from under its feet and it's just faithfully serving the ROM table that's in RAM. Now, at this point, you might be thinking to yourself, look, Piers, it's cool to be able to use AirFrog to update the RAM on a running microcontroller. But we came here to see you update the flash and the firmware on a running microcontroller. Let's do that now. First thing we'll do is we're just going to read the flash of this software ROM to check that there is firmware installed on it. And this is the beginning of the flash, which contains the STM32's reset vectors. So there's firmware installed on this device already. We'll go to the update flash section and we'll erase the flash. Now you keep a good eye on the screen of the Commodore 64 when I erase the firmware of this character ROM. It's erasing now and it's done and the character ROM is still running. Let's just go back and check that we have actually erased the firmware. Firmware is now all Fs. So the next thing we better do is put some new firmware on this. We don't need to erase it. We will verify the update. We'll go and choose a different character ROM to install on this device. And we'll update it. So this is now updating the firmware of the running ARM microcontroller that's serving the character ROM for this Commodore 64. And it's done. And you've noticed absolutely no glitches, absolutely no changes from the device while this has happened. Just to prove there is now flash on that device, we'll go back and reread the flash again, and we can see we've got new reset vectors. Now, just to prove that the firmware has been updated on this character ROM, we'll go and reset it, which we can do from here. And when I hit the reset target button, that microcontroller serving the character ROM is going to reboot, load its new firmware, and start serving the new character set. And you'll see a, a small glitch as that happens because the character ROM takes a few milliseconds to boot. Let's do it now. There we go. Different font, slight glitch before it took effect. Now I'm sure you want to see me updating the kernel ROM. I'll unplug the AirFrog from the character ROM and I'll plug it into the kernel ROM while the system is running. We'll give AirFrog five seconds to boot and then I will load its web page and we can see that it's now been plugged into the kernel ROM and we'll go and check that there's firmware written in flash and there we go we've got the reset vectors 
for the STM32 in flash. It's going to raise it. Deselect these options and erase flash of the kernel that's running this C64 right now. So it's erasing, watch the screen, nothing happens. No impact on the ARM microcontroller at all, erasing the flash from underneath it. Now let's update the firmware. We'll turn on verify. And instead of the stock kernel, we'll load a diagnostics ROM. And let's upload that now. So it's flashing to the kernel. The, st the stock kernel is still being served. It's still sitting in the microcontroller's RAM. The flash has been rewritten from underneath it. Now there's no point in resetting the microcontroller when it's running as the kernel because just a few milliseconds glitch will crash 6502 of the Commodore 64. So we'll turn it off and on again and the kernel ROM should now boot. Of course it's not the stock kernel ROM, it's a diagnostics ROM and this takes a little bit longer to boot than the stock kernel because it's doing RAM testing of the system. But you can see it's now loaded and it's running standard diagnostics test. So I've successfully updated the flash, the firmware, of an ARM microcontroller while it was running without any impact, and I've shown that that firmware was updated. The next thing I promised you is Wi-Fi support. These STM32 microcontrollers don't have any Wi-Fi capability in them, and if they did, the software that's running on these ROMs simply doesn't have any spare cycles for transmitting any data in any case. I'm going to take an AirFrog, I'm going to plug it in to the character ROM and take a look at the graph after I've plugged it in. So I've plugged it in now. In about five seconds, we should start seeing data appearing on this graph from the character ROM. So there we go, it started. And what we're seeing is the number of bytes that that software character ROM has served every second. And you can see it's pretty static at around 600,000 bytes served every second. Let's plug a second air frog into the kernel ROM. And again, within about five seconds, we should start seeing data appearing on the graph from the kernel ROM. So we can see how many times, how many bytes the kernel ROM is serving per second, about 350,000. And then just for a full set, I'll add an air frog to the basic ROM. There we go. In about five seconds, we should see data appearing from the basic ROM. And it's actually running a program right now. What you're seeing below me is a very simple basic program stuck in a go to loop. So we're seeing quite a lot of basic activity. Now this is being transmitted in real time. So you're seeing on the graph the number of bytes that were served in the last second, probably with about 100, 200 millisecond delay from the network. Just to prove that it's happening live, I'm going to stop the basic program now and we should see immediately the number of basic ROM accesses drop to zero. And then when I run the program again, it immediately goes back up to the level it was. So what have I done? I've added Wi-Fi telemetry to these ARM microcontrollers that have no Wi-Fi support and no spare cycles to be sending any telemetry data out. I also said I would show you some of AirFrog's other capabilities. So let's plug it back in, plug it back into the kernel ROM and we'll give it five seconds to boot. And then I should be able to visit its web interface. There we go. So let's just take a look at what we're seeing here. On the dashboard, we see a bunch of summary information about the microcontroller that it's connected to. We can see it's an STM32 F411. And we can see that AirFrog has actually detected what firmware is running here. And there's some other information about the firmware, like the number of bytes that the kernel ROM has served since I turned this C64 on. So if you really want to, you can figure out how long between when I rebooted the C64 and now it's been while I've been videoing. We can also go in and we can look at an awful lot more detail of the MCU firmware itself. So AirFrog, I've coded AirFrog to have knowledge of the details of software-defined retro ROM firmware. And what it's doing is once a second, it's scanning the flash and it's scanning RAM and it's decoding all of that information and putting it together in a web page that we're looking at here. Now we've seen the memory viewer and the memory writer while we were doing the flash updates of the MCUs using AirFrog while the MCUs were running 
live. And this is pretty capable and flexible. You don't just have the capability of accessing RAM and flash, but you can also actually go in and access the hardware peripherals on the ARM microcontroller and modify the state of those hardware peripherals. So for example, you can control GPIOs on the ARM microcontroller from AirFrog. And it's not just STM32 F4s that you can access and control with AirFrog. I have a Raspberry Pi Pico here. Right now my AirFrog is sitting on the desk and it's powered on but not plugged into anything. So I'm going to plug the Pico in and make sure I get the connector the right way around. It's now plugged in. If I refresh the web page, it's immediately recognized that there's an RP2040, the microcontroller in Raspberry Pi Pico connected to it. Now, AirFrog doesn't know what firmware is installed on this device. It's not recognized it. But I still have access to the standard memory viewer and memory writer pages. And just to prove that this is a, actually a Raspberry Pi Pico, let's query the boot ROM of the Pico. So we'll load boot ROMs located at address zero on the Raspberry Pi Pico. I've read that in now, and you can see down here the copyright statement Raspberry Pi trading. So AirFrog can also work on other ARM MCUs. Now, if you want, you can use AirFrog just like a standard debug probe, except one that you're connecting to over Wi-Fi. Here, I'm going to use the open source Rust-based debug probe software, Probe RS, and run, which is going to flash and then connect to my STM32 microcontroller. I tell it that it should be flashing using an AirFrog device and its DNS name is AirFrog1. What chip it's going to be flashing and the ELF file of the firmware that it should install. So if I hit, if I hit enter, ProbeRS is now connecting to the AirFrog over Wi-Fi. It's erasing the microcontroller and now it's programming an updated software defined retro ROM image on one of my STM32 F4s. And it's a little bit slower than programming over wires to be expected. And I haven't fully optimized the protocol between ProbeRS and AirFrog yet, but very handy if you don't have good and convenient physical access to the, the device. And now once it's finished, it's gonna to connect to real time trace or logging of the software defined retro ROM. So these are the logs that the software defined retro ROM produces when it boots up. And it's now still connected to the software defined retro ROM ARM based microcontroller wirelessly using AirFrog. I hope you found this introduction to AirFrog interesting and useful. If you're interested in finding out more or building your own AirFrog, everything's open source. The firmware source code and all of the hardware files you need to build your own AirFrog are available on GitHub, link down in the description. I built these three AirFrogs for about $10 combined. That was for the PCBs, the ESP32 modules I'm using and all the passives, so very affordable. In terms of how I've done it, I'm gonna go into this in more technical detail in a future video, as well as go through some of the capabilities of AirFrog in a lot more depth. But for now, what I'll say is this is based on an ESP32 that's providing the Wi-Fi capability and the controller that I'm running the AirFrog firmware on. And it's using ARM's serial wire debug protocol for actually controlling the MCU, the ARM MCU. Serial wire debug is a capability that's on most ARM microcontrollers. You've seen it on the STM32. You've seen it on the Raspberry Pi. Pico microcontroller. And it's normally used after halting the CPU for doing debug and flash operations. But I think I've shown that you can do some really quite interesting things using serial wire debug and a running MCU. So if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about AirFrog in the future, and you found this video interesting and useful, please do consider sticking around. Till next time, rock on.